Thanks for listening to the GOSH podcast. GOSH stands for the Gynecologic Oncology Sharing Hub, an open space for real and evidence-based discussions on gynecologic cancers. We'll share the stories of gyne cancer patients and survivors and hear from researchers and clinicians who are working behind the scenes to improve the lives of people with gynecologic cancers. Our podcast is produced and recorded on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. It is produced by the Gynecologic Cancer Initiative, a province-wide initiative in British Columbia with the mission to accelerate transformative research and translational practice on the prevention, detection, treatment, and survivorship of gynecologic cancers. Hi, I'm Nicole Kay. And I'm Stephanie Lam. And you're listening to the GOSH podcast. Hi, I'm Elmira Jantuyakova. I do behind the scenes work for the GOSH podcast. Today, I'll take over Stephanie and Nicole's place as a host, and you're listening to the GOSH podcast. All right, welcome back to the GOSH podcast, and this is our series about endometriosis. Today, we have a Dr. Natasha Orr. She's a researcher at the University of British Columbia with a passion for understanding and helping people with endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain. Natasha finished her PhD in 2022, where she studied central sensitization and endometriosis-associated pain. During her PhD, she spearheaded the development of endometriosis educational materials and the workshop for people with lived experience of endometriosis and their loved ones. Now, as a postdoctoral fellow, as a postdoctoral research fellow, her work centers on developing online resources about endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain for healthcare providers in training using patient-oriented research and user-centered design. Her collaborative approach involves working with patient partners throughout each step of her project, making her research not only academically significant, but also accessible and engaging for public. Natasha's commitment to reducing the delay in endometriosis care and improving healthcare providers' understanding of endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain makes her a valuable contributor to both research and advocacy in women's health. Her postdoctoral fellow has received three grants to support project costs, a UBC Health Innovation Funding Investment Award, Michael Smith Health Research, BC, um, BC Convening and Collaborating Award, and WHRI Catalyst Award. She is also supported by CIHR Postdoctoral Fellowship. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We are really happy to have a insightful discussion with you today. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks. So to start, um, maybe just can you share a little bit about your personal journey and motivation to study, um, to focus on endometriosis research and advocacy? Sure, yeah, happy to. So I, I did my undergraduate degree at Queen's, um, and during this time I had experience um, with research and really kind of fell in love with doing research, so knew I wanted to, to continue in that. Um, and I also was most excited about my courses related to women's health. So I knew moving forward I wanted to apply to grad school um, to do women's health research. And UBC's graduate program is really unique in that it focuses on women's health. So um, I flew across across the country, interviewed um, here with the research team, um, and when I met the team and heard about the endometriosis research that this group does, I knew I was moving across the country, um, and, and that's that was that, and I've been here ever since. Um, and so, as you may know, endometriosis is a condition that affects 10% of girls and women and an unmeasured number of gender diverse people, and that's approximately 2 million people in Canada. Uh, and despite this, how common it is and the significant negative effects um, that it has on people's lives, it's still underfunded and under researched. So I'm just really passionate about um, helping improve care for people with this um, th with this condition. Uh, and I also do have family and friends who live with endometriosis. So they also inspire me to continue this work as well. Yeah, that's great. That's really 
nice that you flew all the way here to study women's health and that's really great um and um i know you were a postdoctoral fellow at i um co-supervised by by dr paul yang and another researcher um we had a paul dr yang previously in our podcast um uh, he talked a little bit about his research, but can you tell us a little bit about your specific postdoctoral work? Yeah, I'm really happy to. So I'm I'm really happy to be um, co-supervised by Dr. Paul Young as well as Dr. Fuchsia Howard um, in the School of Nursing. And so um, my research kind of stems from the fact that people with endometriosis often experience dismissal of symptoms due in part to the lack of awareness and knowledge of endometriosis among healthcare providers. And so literature has shown that healthcare providers, including GPs, nurses, and gynecology residents, a report that endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain are areas that they're not very comfortable managing and that they don't feel they had sufficient education in. Um, so consequently, many people experience significant delays to receiving diagnosis and care of endometriosis. Um, and with an average delay being um, uh, being approximately five years, but with some people reporting diagnostic delays exceeding 20 years. So can you imagine having severe pain, pain that might be outside of the period, pain that might last years, and still being told by your doctor that that's normal? Um, so there's a clear need for more education, and that really led to my postdoctoral work to develop educational resources um, on endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain for healthcare providers and training, so medical and nurse practitioner students, and we're using a patient-oriented research and user-centered design approach. And this work is really guided by an amazing steering committee that I'm so grateful to work with, um, which includes people with lived experience of endometriosis, student partners, so our, uh, who are UBC medical and nurse practitioner students, as well as educators, clinicians, and researchers. And our team really guides every step of the research. So they were all involved in the uh, conception and design of the study. They're all co-investigators on the grants that fund the study. Um, they all co-create the study materials, and they'll all be involved in the publications and other knowledge translation activities. Um, so as a team, we kind of came together. We all knew that um, we needed more education on endometriosis, and we're all really passionate about doing that. But we had a few questions that we needed to ask, which includes, what information do we need to include in these resources? Uh, what format should we make the resources in? What, what do the students want? So we wanted to look at what the knowledge needs and gaps were. Um, so we performed a needs assessment survey of the UBC medical and nurse practitioner students to answer some of these questions. Um, and the results from that survey are now informing the development of our educational resources. And so we're creating um, a few different resources, but the main two are a video series um, as well as a virtual case-based resource using the cyber patient platform. Um, and the video series will kind of contain the educational content, so the knowledge we want the students to know. So what is endometriosis? What is the prevalence? What is the impact on people's lives? Um, how do you diagnose and treat it? So that'll be in the video series. And then the um, virtual case-based resource will really allow for the practical application of that knowledge. So it within, its, within that resource, it doesn't actually provide um, that kind of um, knowledge or content, it just allows for the students to practice. Um, so together, these resources have addressed many of the identified needs and suggestions from the needs assessment survey. Um, and yeah, and that's a little bit about what I'm doing in my postdoctoral work. That's really great. And uh, the, the it's very powerful, I think, because it, as you said, it involves physicians students and like researchers and everyone patients as well and it's really uh, I think I think multifaceted research that you are doing it's, it's really good you're basically asking basically you're tackling the problem I feel at its roots where the medical education starts to happen and so people and from the med school the physicians are aware could be aware of this of endometriosis and keep it in mind for the future as they go along the training and yeah, yeah it's really that's exactly the plan 
<laughs> That's really great. Yeah, just tackling it at the roots. <laughs> um, about the project, um, I was wondering, is there a, was there any challenges that you have encountered throughout the project? The strategies you've employed, um, in the strategies you've employed, um, to bridge this knowledge gap. Yeah. So, um. That's a great question. So obviously there are there are challenges. So in addition to the challenge of lack of education, then we need more resources and education in general. So that's a challenge in itself. But another challenge is ensuring that the resources we create are relevant to the students. Um, so it's one thing for them to say, we need more knowledge, like we need more information about endometriosis. It's another thing for them to actually use the resources. So um, that's something that we're currently we're currently trying to figure out. Um, and so how we're getting around this or how we're mitigating kind of this this challenge is um, by working with our student partners. Um, and so these are people who have firsthand experience of the learning environment and the ways to improve it. And they also help us ensure that the resources that we're developing are relevant to the students. Um, and we also have the information from the needs assessment survey saying what in, what kind of format they want the resources in, what what they're more likely to actually watch or listen to. Um, so that that's one challenge that we have. Another challenge is finding the time and space for this information to fit in the curriculum. Um, so the the resources that we're currently developing are going to be optional or enrichment um, material. They're not going to be added as core curriculum at this time. Um, but the ultimate goal would be to increase the endometriosis and chronic pain curriculum, um, core curriculum among healthcare providers and training. So currently we're just creating these uh, resources as optional or enrichment. They're going to be short, digestible, and engaging um, to help. So hopefully these very busy um, healthcare provider trainees are able to absorb and and bring um, this information forward to their future practice. Mm. That's great. Yeah, uh, it must be a, a great challenge. The curriculum is kind of already full, right? Probably. Yeah. But it's important work <laughs> that needs to be done and learned. Um, great. Um, in terms of uh, patient partners, as uh, it is in, that are involved in your work and you're in your PhD work as well. Um, how has the involvement of patient partners shaped your project and what role do they play in your um, advocacy efforts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I mentioned, our all of our team members play uh, or contribute to each each stage of the research. Um, so that includes conception design, developing materials, et cetera. So for example, specifically when we're when we're thinking about how our patient partners contribute, when we created the um, the content for the virtual case-based resource, um, we needed to answer a lot of questions. So basically we had a very long list of all the potential questions that are that the healthcare provider could ask this fake patient. Um, and we needed to provide answers to all of those questions. Um, and so our patient partners were incredible at providing, helping us to, to answer these questions because it's from their own perspective as people who have lived with, um, with endometriosis. So that's one way that they've contributed. Um, another way that our patient partners contribute to this work is that they share information about um, what they hope the physicians would learn, what they wanted their physicians to say to them, for example. Um, and so that all that information is being included in the resources as well. Um, and an example of what I mean by that is, um, is having, is they wanted the physicians to validate their pain. So in the resources at various um, parts of the resources, we're including um, kind of points that say, don't forget to validate your patient's pain, this is a way you could do that, et cetera. So that's another way that our patient partners have really helped um, guide this project. And when we go into our KT part of this project, they'll um, they'll be helping us ensure that the research results are shared in a way that's understandable to the community uh, as well before we share that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really great because eventually the people who will be receiving care, the people who are... So eventual consumers of all this work is the patients mm -hmm. and knowing their perspective, what they think is needed is also is really important. Yeah. 
yeah absolutely. along the way yeah as you mentioned there is probably as there is a lot of misconception about endometriosis in the society and probably um, among healthcare providers that you're trying to tackle as well um, and in your experience, what are the common misconceptions uh, about endometriosis among um, public or physicians or um, anywhere, basically? Um, yeah. yeah. A common misconception is that endometriosis is just painful periods. Um, and unfortunately, this is sometimes thought not just of the community, but also of healthcare providers um, who think this as well. Um, so although painful periods is a very common symptom of endometriosis, endometriosis is a complex systemic condition that is associated with various symptoms, including painful sex, painful bowel movements, chronic pelvic pain, um, as well as infertility, fatigue, decreased psychosocial well-being, um, and, as well as others. So it's really important to to consider multiple um, symptoms and factors and not just focus on painful periods. So in my work moving forward and the resources that we develop, we're going to be ensuring that we include kind of a whole body approach to the multiple sy um, systems and symptoms that um, endometriosis could be associated with, not just painful periods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of Along the lines of public awareness and tackling the misconceptions, uh, I know two years ago you started a thread on Reddit about endometriosis or you and your group, your lab, and uh, until this day, it already has around 250 comments. People ask you about endometriosis, about their um, experiences, perhaps, and Basically, people have a lot of questions, and and I see that you and your team answered a lot of those questions. And I just want to—I I was just wondering how did you come up with this idea? And I feel like this is really great for a person, let's say somebody who is looking for um, just advice rather than um, sort of it's kind of accessible, more accessible for people to sort of access this information because Reddit is kind of a popular a platform for people yeah, to discuss things. And just was wondering how did you come up with the idea? Oh, yeah. yeah. I personally didn't come up with the idea, to be quite yeah. honest with you, <laughs> but our team um, really values uh, knowledge translation and, and working with our patient partners and giving back to the community that we're trying to help. Um, so uh, it was it was an idea of our team to kind of use Reddit as a platform because it, like you said, it, it's it's really kind of widespread. So it gets a lot of engagement. So uh, yeah, we were really excited and happy to be part of that and answer as many questions as we could in that in that short time frame. Yeah, the great thing about Reddit, I feel, is it's anonymous, and some people, if if like it's sense it's a sensitive topic, right? And the metriosis and like mm -hmm. women's health in general has been not talked about for a long time and having sort of an opportunity to ask a question anonymously and get a answer from like an expert um, is great, I think. Yeah, yeah. great work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in terms of your, um, again, team, you navigate like academia, healthcare sector, education and public engagement. And how do you navigate all of that? It's kind of all different spheres, right? It must be um, at times challenging to sort of keep all these things uh, together and working. I was just wondering how do you um, navigate uh, that? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a great question. And again, I'm going to bring it back to my incredible team that I have um, the opportunity to work with. And it, and it really helps to have a multidisciplinary team with people from each of these different communities um, that kind of really help ensure that our research that we're producing is disseminated in a way that's understandable and meaningful to the people with endometriosis. Um, so we do use, or we are going to use multiple um, knowledge translation strategies um, that'll include academic publications and presentations that'll target our um, healthcare and research um, colleagues. And then we'll also be doing some community 
um, outreach as well. So posting on social media, for example, making lay summary reports and sharing that around too. Um, so we're kind of using multiple methods to target different um, communities. But together as a, as a multidisciplinary team, we'll kind of all work together to, uh, to create those different um, knowledge translation activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tackling the problem from different angles, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and as a team. That's as how we like team. to do it. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah, I think um, we have a couple of last questions. Um, so in your opinion, what steps uh, can be taken to reduce the delay in endometriosis care? Um, and how can healthcare providers be better equipped to recognize and address chronic pelvic pain? Mm -hmm. There's multiple factors that contribute to the delay in diagnosis and care of endometriosis, but lack of education among healthcare providers is a, a, plays a key role. Um, so my, my research kind of aims to use a user-centered approach um, to develop resources that address these knowledge needs on endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain um, and to help healthcare providers better recognize the symptoms and, and hopefully contribute to more timely um, diagnosis. And endometriosis affects multiple systems. Um, and so multiple specialties may be involved with endometriosis care that includes family medicine, gynecology, emergency medicine, gastroenterology, etc. So we're kind of targeting the students before they branch into these specialties. And hopefully that'll allow us to better equip all these healthcare providers um, of all specialties to be more aware of endometriosis symptoms. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. Um, I think just a, a piece of advice <laughs> that we want to hear from you as an advocate and researcher, um, what would you advise um, as a person also who works with endometriosis patients and um, patient partners with endometriosis? Um, what advice would you give to the individuals living with endometriosis and just being diagnosed with it and perhaps being dismissed for a long time uh, by healthcare system? Yeah, um, I guess I want to first say that um, like your pain is not in your head. We do believe that this pain is very real um, and we're working as very hard to try to increase the education in, of healthcare providers so it reduces the dismissal that we know goes on. Um, and what I can say, which I know is not excellent advice, but um, to try to be your own advocate as much as you can um, with, with trying to get the care that you deserve um, because your pain is, is real. Um, another thing I do want to say is if you have the capacity to participate as a patient partner in research, please do. Your experience and perspective um, is incredibly valuable to ensuring that the research is, that we're doing is meaningful and relevant to people with endometriosis. Um, and you can follow me or the BC Center for Pelvic Pain and Endometriosis on Twitter or Instagram um, for more information about endometriosis and about our research studies as well as um, any calls that we have looking for patient partners. We do post them on social media often, so um, you, can, you can have a look there. Yes, great. Thank you, Natasha. And we will link all the uh, links to the websites, uh, to the lab, to the endometriosis um, and pelvic pain lab in the description, and we will tag them in all our social media. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think I think that was my last question. Um, thank you so much for this insightful conversation and for all the work that you and your team are doing to increase the awareness of endometriosis and and improve the care. Um, yeah, I think that's is our last episode a series uh, in, in the series about endometriosis, but I'm sure we'll have plenty more in the future. Um, but yeah. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you for having us and for letting us share about endometriosis. Thanks for joining us on the GOSH podcast. To learn more about the Gynecologic Cancer Initiative and our podcast, make sure to check out our website at gynecancerinitiative.ca.